Good evening, guys. How are you? Uh, after we finished yung lesson 21, which is uh, about Daniel, the book of Daniel, uh, the following Wednesday, we talked about yung... Um, ano nga ba yung Ash Wednesday? Kasi Ash Wednesday nung time na yun. And then the following Wednesday, we we, uh, we had a Hyatt's Hus kasi... Uh, we had technical difficulties, but we're back. So, nako, ganda ng pag-uusapan natin ngayon. Medyo madami-dami. No? At uh, simulan na natin. Ayan. So, welcome. Welcome po sa LA First Filipino Church of the Nazarene. At uh, kami po ang inyong kapitbahay dyan sa 3rd and Vermont. Uh, for us na lagi yung makapiling, makasama, you can subscribe to our LA Philness at LA Philness sa Facebook at sa, sa, sa YouTube naman, LA Filipino Nazarene. At meron din sa, ano, sa Instagram. Alright. So join our church every Sunday, 9 a.m. at Wiley Chapel, 3401 West 3rd Street, Los Angeles, California. Ito po yung mga fellowship schedule namin. Every Wednesday, syempre, 7 p.m. Walk Through the Bible. Ito po ay virtual midweek natin habang pandemic pa. Live po at uh, Facebook, YouTube, mapapanood po ito. At uh, ito po ay fast cut ng mga libro ng, uh, sa 66 books ng Biblia. Every Friday naman, 8 to 9, 1 hour lang po, Zoom live group. So, sa Zoom po ito at uh, may replay din po sa Facebook and YouTube. Saturday naman, uh, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Tanghali, no? uh, Zoom prayer breakfast. Uh, pwede pong Zoom, pwede po kayong pumunta sa church. Pwede rin po kayong manood sa Facebook. And on Sunday, 9 a.m. in person at Wiley Chapel. At syempre, meron ding virtual worship live Facebook and YouTube. Happy birthday mo nga po pala sa mga March celebrators, sa uh, mga attendees and members and workers ng church. Uh, so, happy birthday sa inyong lahat. So, ito po ang ating My Journey of a Lifetime, 52 Weeks Journey of a Lifetime. This is to ensure uh, everyone reads the entire Bible in a year. Ang tawag po natin sa series na to ay Walk Through the Bible. So, tapos na tayo sa, nagsimula tayo siyempre sa Old Testament, tapos na tayo sa Pentateuch, no? yung first five books and then yung the next 12 books yung books of history tapos na tayo doon and then uh, yung third section naman yung books of poetry tapos na rin tayo doon at uh, nandito tayo sa fourth section of the Old Testament ang tawag dito ay the prophets at last time na diniscuss natin si Daniel so tapos na tayo sa major prophets so from Isaiah to Daniel at sisimulan na natin nandito na tayo so ituturo ko ng aking mouse Ayan, Minor, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Badaya, Jonah, and Micah. So, hatiin natin sa dalawa. So, ngayong gabi, no, 7 p.m., sana nandito kayo, nanonood kayo, the books of Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadaya, Jonah, and Micah. Ayan. Eh, sige, simulan na natin. Nakilang ang masalangit. Salamat po sa pagkakataon na lagi kami natututo sa pamagitan ng wisdom nyo. Kaya po magturo sa amin, makikilala namin ang Biblia. At para mapalapit kami, Panginoon, sa tinatawag na the Word. Ang Word po at ikaw ay isa at nais po namin na mapalapit sa inyo. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Ayan, simulan natin. The Book of Hosea. A tragic but hopeful love story. Uy, love story pala to. Alam nyo, uh, uh, beginning with, with Hosea, no, we start the study of yung 12 books na mga susunod. No, ito ang tawag dito ay minor prophets. No, They are not minor in the sense of being less important, but uh, because of their uh, brevity, no? No, however, Zechariah, which we study sa mga susunod na lesson, ay by no means a brief book. Medyo mahaba yung, uh, yung Zechariah na yun. So, yung major prophet, hindi dahil sa mas importante sila, kumbaga medyo mas, ma- ma- mas mahaba-haba lang yung pagkakasulat. Uh, kumpara sa mga minor prophets, medyo maikli ng konti. Ayan, simulan natin sa Hosea. Nako, si Hosea ay isang profeta. Saan ba? Saan ba galing si Hosea? 
Okay, naaalala nyo, no? Uh, recap lang. Tinuro natin sa mga nakalang, naka, nakalaang, <laughs> nakaraang lessons, no? Ito, ano? Ito yung Old, histo- uh, Old Testament history. Siyempre, nagsimula sa creation, lumabas si Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph. Tapos nagkaroon ng bondage, uh, lumabas si, Mo- si Moses and si Joshua, si, si Moses yung deliverer no, from Joseph time. Nandun sila sa Egypt, tiniliver sila ni Moses. Then time ni Joshua, then dumating yung Judges, Deborah, so on and so forth. Hanggang kay Samuel. United Kingdom pa noon, ng time ni Samuel. Dumating si Saul, inanoint niya, bagong hari. Tapos napasa kay David and then kay Solomon. After ng kay Solomon, eto na, na-divide na sa North and South uh, Kingdom ang Israel. Yung North, yung Northern Kingdom, tinawag na Israel pa rin. At ang uh, Southern Kingdom, kung saan galing si, uh, si King David, ay uh, Judah. No? At dyan din galing si Jesus. So yung mga prophets natin, makikita nyo, uh, nandyan sila, taga dyan sila, ibig sabihin. So ang pinag-uusapan natin ngayon ay si Hosea. Ayan. Si Hosea ay galing sa Kingdom of Israel. Ayan. Alam niyo sa libro na to, no? si Hosea, tinawag niya na ang uh, Kingdom of Israel uh, ng mga various names, no? such as uh, Israel, syempre. Ang tawag niya dito, Ephraim, Samaria, Jacob. No? Kasi mapapansin niyo, syempre Israel, yung Israel na dating bansa nila na iisa, na hati. So kinuha nila yung pangalan na yun kasi mas malaki yung kanilang uh, mga tribo, no? Ten tribes sila doon. Pagkatapos tinawag na Ephraim, syempre, ito yung panganay na, na anak ni Joseph, no? At Samaria naman, ito kasi uh, yung kanilang ano, yung kanilang capital. Okay? So sa Judah, ang capital nila, Jerusalem. At syempre, Jacob, yung dating pangalan ng Israel. So para mas uh, familiar lang tayo, pag binasa niya yung Book of uh, Hosea. Ang ministry ni Hosea is probably during no, mga the last 50 years uh, of the Northern Kingdom's existence. So, yung huling 50 years, no, yun yung ministry ni Hosea. Alam nyo, 200, no, 200 years before Hosea's time, the ten tribes had seceded from Judah and set up the Northern Kingdom called Israel. So, bago dumating pa ang propetang si Hosea, eh 200 years na nakaraan nung naghiwalay ang Judah at saka ang Israel. No? They prospered materially but failed spiritually when they began to worship idols. Ayun, yun ang pagkakamali. Uh, hindi pa natin pinag-uusapan yung Judah, yung Israel muna. Ito, ito, itong ibabaw, itong northern part. Okay? So, pinrosper daw sila uh, materially pero nagfailed naman sila spiritually in fact no in fact uh, makita ka pa ng uh, baga uh, they they feel spiritually no when they began to worship idols no in fact ito yung mga makikita nakitang mga uh, ng mga ng mga archaeologists anthropologists anthropologists or whatsoever na nahukay doon sa part na yon no na meron talaga mga sinyales na nagkaroon ng idol worship so uh, god sent elijah and elisha na alala niyo si elijah at si elisha yung propeta to warn about this practice no the warning were to no avail yun lang as the people refuse refuse to return to god ang keyword sa sa Hosea ay return. Bakit? Iniimbitahan kasi sila no na na bumalik sa Panginoon, no? Ang theme ng ng Hosea ay God's redeeming love. Oo, kasi uh, kung ma, 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 may, ma, mas may intindihan natin, sinulat no sa Hosea chapter 4 verse 2, no, yung yung mga listahan ng kasalanan ng Israel. Ano-ano ba ito? Basahin natin. Cursing, lying, murder, stealing, and adultery are rampant. One act of bloodshed follows another. Naku, eh para namang pamilyar naman itong sa mga panahon ngayon. Di ba? 
So, ito ay hindi bago sa panahon ngayon, sa panahon ni Hosea. Di ba? So, to illustrate Israel's unfaithfulness, ayan. God commands Hosea to marry an adulterous wife. Ang pangalan, Gomer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Kasawa ko ba naman ang pangalan, Gomer? Parang, parang dating sa akin, parang Gomer. Parang parang matchong tambay sa kanto <laughs> pero hindi si Gomer ay isang adulterous wife no their three children are given names representing God's ominous warnings Hosea's marriage is an object lesson to illustrate God's unchanging love for Israel ayan so God's unfailing love revealed No, kasi nga naman itong si Gomer ay napaka-unfaithful. No? But God commands Hosea to show his love to his wife again. So, malis, may nagpalit siya sa iba, kinuha niya. Nako, ay sa kultura natin mga Pilipino, eh nako, ay eh, medyo malamang itong si si Gomer ay eh, ay patulfo na ni Hosea <laughs> kasi kasi unfaithful siya no at uh, at uh, nanlalalaki no kumbaga kaya ikaw ang tanong no kaya ba ikaw ba kaya bang patawarin yung asawa mo kung nanlalaki siya or kung nang babae siya yeah kaya mo bang i, i-, i- uh, exercise no? or i exemplify or i ipakita yung katulad ng pagmamahal ng Diyos sa atin alam nyo, uh, God commands Hosea to to show his love to his wife again illustrating God still loves the Israelites no? he still loves you and me parang ganun though they have turned to other gods God never changes. No, he still loves us even when our sin breaks his heart. Yun, magandang paalala dito sa libro ni Hosea na mahal pa rin tayo ng Diyos kahit nagkasala tayo sa Kanya, kahit binasag natin yung puso niya, sinaktan natin siya, mahal tayo, mahal niya tayo, hindi siya nagbabago. At pinakita dito sa pamagitan ng karakter ni Hosea na mahalin yung kanyang asawa kahit na patuloy siyang niloloko. Alam niyo, backsliders are always punished when they refuse to repent. Agaya ng Israel, they refuse to repent. No, Parang si Hosea, si Lord, yung Israel, ito yung si Gomer. Parang tayo si Gomer, parang si Lord, si Hosea. Parang ganun yan. Eh. Yun yung parang pinapakita dito. Eh. Na tayo yung backsliders. Yung Israel, ano nangyari? Na nag-backslide sila. No exception. Kahit mahal na mahal siya ng Panginoon. No, dinisiplin niya ang Israel sa pamamagitan ng Assyria. No, kinonquer ng Israel. Ah, ng Assyrian Empire ang Israel. Hindi yung Juda Israel lang. Alam niyo, Christians who who break their vows to the Lord, actually, they do not lose their salvation. Alam niyo ba, they do not lose their salvation, but they lose the joy of being a Christian. Yeah, tingnan mo sa Psalm 51.12. Restore the joy of your salvation to me and sustain me by giving me a willing spirit. No, yung salmista sabi niya, Lord, you restore me yung joy of salvation. No? Tayo mga Krisyano na who break the vow sa ating Panginoon, hindi naman nawala yung salvation pero nalulus natin. Yung kapayapaan, kasiglahan at yung, yung galak sa puso natin ng tinatawag na salvation. Kaya yung salmi sabi niya, sustain me by giving me a willing spirit. No? Alam niyo, when we sin, we can expect to receive discipline from God. Sigurado yan, didisiplinahin niya tayo. Kasi hindi konsintido rin Diyos natin. Kagaya ng ginawa niya sa bansang Israel. He always disciplines His children because of His love for them. No? Parang tayo mga magulang. Dinidisiplina natin ang mga anak natin. Dahil mahal natin sila. Pero pag kinukonsinti mo ang anak mo, akala mo yun ang pagmamahal. Pero hindi. Nililid mo sila sa distraction. Alam niyo ang key verse dito sa book of Hosea ay yung Hosea chapter 3 verse 1. It's about waiting for restoration. Sabi, then the Lord said to me, go again, show love to a woman 
who is loved by another man and is an adulteress. Just as the Lord loves the Israelites, though they turn to the other gods and love raisin cakes. Kau, kaya mo ba magpatawad? Kaya mo ba magmahal kahit pinasag yung puso mo? No? Kahit na t- pinagtaksilan ka? Maaring may sitwasyon ka ngayon na nararanasan mo yan. Nakikinig ka, nanonood ka ngayon at nakaranas ka na pinagtaksilan ka ng kasintahan mo, boyfriend, girlfriend, asawa, ng lalaki siya o ng babae siya. Pero look at Hosea, yung pag-ibig niya sa kanyang asawa. Ganun din, pinakita yung pag-ibig ng Diyos sa atin. Na kahit na adulterous tayo, kahit na tumitingin tayo sa ibang God, kahit na tumitingin tayo sa ibang idols, kahit na kahit hindi number one sa puso natin ng Panginoon, pero nandyan siya waiting for restoration. Let's talk about the book of Joel. No, the book of Joel is how to respond in crisis. Teka, tingnan natin. Nasaan naman si Joel dito? Kung si Hosea nasa taga Israel, Northern Kingdom, si Joel naman ay taga Judah. Okay? Sa Kingdom of Judah. The occasion of uh, Joel's prophecy is a severe plague of locusts that have devastated the land. Nako. Pag binasa niyo ito, kung madi, madirihin kayo sa mga locust, <laughs> medyo ma-experience ito pag binasa niyo ito. Kaya I encourage everyone, read the book of Joel. Joel uses this disaster to warn of a more dreadful judgment to come. Ginamit niya ito no? as, a, as a picture na meron pa dating na dreadful judgment ng Panginoon. He calls the coming judgment the day of the Lord. Alam niyo, in the New Testament, this phrase refers to the time after the church is taken to heaven. May kita niya sa Book of Matthew, 1 Thessalonians. So, ang tawag dito, Great Tribulation. Joel prophesies about the coming of the Holy Spirit, which is fulfilled in the day of Pentecost. Ang theme ng Book of Joel is about repentance. Joel's message is God's readiness to forgive and restore all who will come to Him in repentance. Again, God has not changed. Kaya, napaka-buti ng Panginoon. Ang key verse dito sa Joel ay, in Joel chapter 2, verse 13, Tear your hearts, not just clothes, and return to the Lord your God. For He is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, abounding in faithful love. And he relents from sending disaster. Ooh. Kasi ng mga panahon na yun, usong-usong yung pinupunit yung damit eh. Pagka nagkakasara, hindi lang damit. Punitin mo yung puso mo at pumalik ka sa Panginoon. Sapagkat gracious and compassionate at mabagal, hindi basa-basa nagagalit ng Panginoon. Punong-puno ng faithful love. No? At lagi kanyang patatawarin. Now let's go to the book of Amos. May tanong sa the book of Amos, where is your heart? Nako, tagasa naman tong si Amos. Tingnan natin. Si Amos ay tagabansang Israel or Northern Kingdom of Israel. Okay? So, taga ibabaw siya. Taga north. So, ito naman, si Amos ay kilalang herdsman. No? With no training as a prophet. But, he is called directly from his work in the fields to take God's message to Israel. Alam niyo, Amos is not the only prophet of his day. God sent many prophets to warn his people of the coming destruction if they did not repent. Kung titingnan niyo, kasama niya si Jonah at si Hosea na, na during that time. At uh, si Amos preaches against their self-indulgence. Yung Israel. He preaches against their, their explo- exploitation of the poor. No, their lying. Their hypocrisy in worship. Yun yung kanyang pinrich. Ang theme ni Amos ay certainty of justice. Pagkakapantay-pantay. 
each messages, no, yung mga messages niya ay punong-puno ng warning and a call also to repentance. Amos no, gives us uh, God's perspective of injustice. Amos tells us God has a special interest in the disadvantaged and His people must treat them justly or face judgment. Ito, gusto ko ito eh, kasi may pagka-social justice. No? Kung baga, uh, pinakita lagi ng Panginoon dito na, Teka, hindi ko kayo nalimutan. Kayong mga disadvantaged, kayong mga minority, kayong mga medyo hindi napapansin, mga, mga tao sa laylayan ng lipunan. Diba? Kayong mga migrante, kayong mga tao na, na parang second class. Ang message na Amos no, should remind us of our responsibilities to racial minorities, mga single parents, mga orphans, mga elderly, and others who are often exploited na laging ha, kumbaga, hindi na nakakuha ng parehas ng justice. Kaya ang key verse sa Amos ay matatagpuan sa chapter 5 verse 24. But let justice flow like water and righteousness like an unfailing stream. Yes. Now, let's go to the book of Obadiah. A message of judgment and hope. Nako, tingnan naman natin. Taga saan si Obadaya? Si Obadaya ay taga Judah. Ayan. Taga Southern Kingdom din siya. Alright? So, si Obadaya, he prophesies God will punish Edom. Sino ba si Edom? Okay? Ito yung ano eh, distant relatives of God's people. No? Through Esau. Naalala niya ba si Esau? yung kapatid ni uh, Jacob the liar. Di ba? So, yung kanyang descendant, descendants, ang tawag ay mga Edomites. No? So, dito, eh, kumbaga, pa- ipapunish niya yung mga Edomites kasi for standing by and gloating when Babylon invades Judah. Hmm. Kumbaga, walang ginawa. Hindi nila tinulungan at hindi lang yun. No, kung baga, eh, talagang <laughs> sabi nga, eh, buti nga sa inyo. Uh, hindi lang yun. Hindi lang yun. Ito mga Edomites na to, they also loot Judah in the aftermath and turn those who have escaped over to the Babylonians. No, so nung kinapture na yung Judah ng mga Babylonians, ito si King Nebuchadnezzar, eh, hindi lang sila tinulungan, nag Kumbaga, gloating pa sila. Nagkatapos, ninakawan pa nila yung Judah. So, kung tutuusin, mga pinsan nila to eh. no At saka, kung may mga katakas, tineturn over pa nila doon sa Babylonians. Alam niyo, ang theme dito sa sa book na to ay God will punish those who harm His people. Ayan. Kaya kung merong nang aapi sa iyo ngayon, merong nagsasabi sa iyo ng hindi maganda or binabash ka or alam niyo yun, yung mga nagsasabi-sabi sa iyo na may malisya ang mga bawat sinasabi nila laban sa iyo. Eh, huwag kang magalala. God will punish those who harm His people. Alam niyo, when people take advantage of us, And it seems as though they have gotten away with it. Obadiah tells us that they will not escape God's justice. Tandaan yan. The book of Obadiah has the distinction of being the Old Testament's shortest book. Yung pinakamaikli sa Old Testament book. Pero kaya tingnan natin ang magandang uh, tawag nito uh, yung magandang key verse no dito sa book of Obadiah judgment of the nations for the day of the Lord is near against all the nations as you have done it will be done to you what you deserve will return on your own head kaya huwag kang matakot the vengeance is the Lord no kapag may nangapi sa iyo nang daya sa iyo nang gulang sa iyo sinaktan ka uh, uh, si, uh, 
sinisira ang pangalan mo. The judgment, no? kung pag sabi dito, as you have done, it will be done to you. Ayan, kaya huwag kang matakot. Alright? Mm-hmm. Punta tayo dito sa John. Ito ay eh, gumawa ako ng series dito. At uh, hopefully may preach ko ulit. Four part no? series ng John. At uh, dito medyo paikliin natin. Gagawa tayo ng fast cut. May four chapters tong John. At ang John, syempre tingnan natin saan prophet bagaling si John. Israel. Ayan, si John ay taga Israel. So, taga Northern Kingdom din siya. Ayan. So, this book differs on, uh, from the rest of the minor prophets. Bakit? Kasi it is a narrative about Jonah himself rather than collection of his prophecies or sermons. Medyo kakaiba siya. Kasi ito ay patungkol sa nangyari sa kanya. Tandaan natin, no? Uh, itong book of Jonah ay hindi fictional or hindi siya allegory. No? Uh, hin- kasi, kasi pag binasa mo, parang... Diba parang wow, parang posible ba yung nakainin ka ng isla, tapos iluluwa ka. So madaming nag-accuse na nako, fictional lang yan, allegory, kwentong pambata. Actually, Jonah is real. Historical person siya. No? He's like a man like you and me. Alam nyo, uh, the book of jo- uh, our Lord ref- refers to the book of Jonah, no, uh, Thus, placing his stamp of approval on his book. Kasi matatagpuan ito sa Matthew, sa Luke. Kung baga, uh, nung binanggit ito sa New Testament, ibig sabihin, hindi ito allegory lang. Hindi ito fiction. Totoo nangyari. Kasi kung pabasahin nyo siya as the book opens, kung maalala nyo, kung alam nyo na yung story nito, or kung hindi nyo pa alam, no, nung pag bukas mo ng libro, mababasa mo God, God commands Jonah to go to Nineveh to preach. No? Nasaan ba ang Nineveh? Ayan, eto. May araw. Okay, etong part na to. Ang problema, uh, yung, yung, uh, ang Nineveh kasi noon, yun yung capital no? nung, uh, nung, uh, nung, nung area na yun, nung empire na nandun. Jonah says uh, no to God. Sabi niya, ayaw ko. Daw sunod. Alam siya sa pumunta. Ayun, dito. Pumunta siya sa Tarshish or bandang Spain. no Sa modern time. Through boat. Through boat. Eh, ang problema, eh, nagkaroon ng aberya. Ano nangyari? Tingnan natin. Jonah uh, says no to God and please to Tarshish by ship. Jonah falls asleep while on the ship and the Lord sends a storm to wake him. Anytime we as Christians, alam nyo, get out of God's will, tandaan nyo, He will send a storm to wake us. Right? It may be a storm of sickness, pwedeng financial loss, or some other kind of storm. But the Lord knows how to get our attention. Because of the storm, Jonah is cast into the sea. But God is in the storm. Yun, ganda nun. God is in the storm of your life. no? And He takes care of Jonah by causing a great fish to swallow him. Nung sa chapter 2, matatagpuan natin doon na si Jonah eh, in prayer. No? Jonah's prayer from the belly of the fish. No? Nananalangin siya, Naku Lord, ayoko dito. <laughs> It is made up of primarily of quotations from Psalms and expresses repentance and confidence in God. So yung prayer niya, no, ginamit niya yung Psalms, nag-repent siya, pinakita niya yung confidence sa Panginoon. Then the great fish vomits Jonah onto dry land. Isinuka siya. Yan, hindi naman sinabing whale yon pero sinabi big fish. Pwedeng whale kasi siya naman yung big fish na nakikita natin ngayon. Pero I don't know, during those times. God gives Jonah another chance. So Nineveh is a huge city of more than 120,000 people. So during those times, madami yun. Of three days journey, no, it means it takes three days to walk around it. So tatlong araw para malakad mo yun. Well, hindi naman ganun kalayo. No? Hindi naman ganun kalaki. Kayang-kaya yun. Kumbaga, uh, madali lang. 
So, ano naging resulta no nagpreach na nagpreach na nagpreach si Jonah. No, ayun. Yung mga tao ay even yung king, okay? Even yung king eh nagpatira pa. No, nagpatira pa. Kumbaga, ang theme dito ay God's love for all people. Kasi kahit na hindi hudyo tong mga to, kasi ito more, more than the Iraq to. Eh. No, binasag nila yung mga idol worship nila, mingi sila ng tawad sa Diyos, nag-repent sila. No, pero ito si Jonah may pagka-racist ng konti. Kasi nga, since hindi ito mga hudyo, ayaw niyang masagip. Jonah feels sorry for himself and the plant that sheltered him before it died. Nagmaktol pa nga itong si Jonah. Eh. Sa namatay, nag-withered yung plant na nagbibigay sa kanya ng shade. However, he has no love or compassion for the thousands of people in Nineveh. Alam niyo, this book also tells us that the Lord sent warnings of judgment through His prophets. And if the nations repented, God would not carry out his threatened judgment. Jonah is God's first foreign missionary. Kaya kapag may mga prophecy, naalala ko yung mga prophecy dati sa Philippines, yeah, prophecy sa US, kapag hindi natin dininig yun, ay nako, judgment na Panginoon ang kasunod. Pero pag dininig naman natin yun, magkakaroon tayo ng magandang buhay. The theme of Jonah is God's love for all people. Kasi kahit hindi ko Diyo, mahal ng Panginoon. I mean, this book reminds us that no one is beyond hope. This book should challenge us to reach out to relatives natin, mga neighbors natin, mga peers, mga co-workers who may seem hopeless. Kaya naman, makikita natin sa key verse ng Jonah, chapter 4 to 11. So may I not care about the great city of Nineveh, which has more than 120,000 people who cannot distinguish between the right and the left, and their left, as well as many animals. So dito, pinakita ng Panginoon, kay Hudyo ka o hindi, no, kay Kumbaga, basta ikaw ay tao, bibigyan ka niya ng pagkakataon, magsisend siya ng propeta, ng missionary sa'yo. Kaya po, ang ating simbahan ay uh, may mga missionary trips na binabalak para ma-experience sa mga tao natin sa simbahan kung paano talaga no, ipakalat ang salita ng Diyos. Although we are part of a bigger mission ng Church of the Nazarene, we give our part, we, go, we give our mission uh, 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 donations, our, our, our share, pero iba pa yung ikaw mismo ang tatapak doon sa putikan, di ba? Alright. So move tayo doon sa last book. Ang book of Micah. Nako, tagasan ba itong si Micah? Paalala lang po, ang pangalang Micah ay lalaki, hindi po babae. <laughs> okay. Judah. Taga Judah si Micah. Taga Southern Kingdom. Si Micah is contemporary ni Isaiah. At ni Hosea. Okay? So si Micah, ito siya. Ibig sabihin po ng contemporary ay kasabay niya. And si Hosea, taga Israel, at taga Northern Kingdom ng Israel. Si, sa Judah naman, si Isaiah, si, si Isaiah at saka si Micah, taga Judah. Ang ibig sabihin po ng contemporary, kasabay. O kaya eh, kaedad or kasama mo sa isang panahon. Uh, alam niyo kung gusto niyo malaman kung sino yung mga batchmates niyo, You add 10 years and you minus 10 years sa age nyo. So yung mas matanda ka ng 10 years, mas matanda sa'yo ng 10 years, more or less. Yan yung mga kakontemporary nyo. Sa panahon ngayon. Hindi ko alam sa panahon nila. <laughs> anyway, his book, si Micah, is composed of three sermons. He preaches to the people and each of the sermons begins with the word hear. Ayan, sabi, na, sabi ni Micah, makinig kayo. Yun. Lagi yung sinasabi niya, makinig kayo. His book warns both Israel and Judah of the coming judgment and offers pardon if they will repent. While the Israelites publicly carry you know, carry out religious services, they are privately seeking money and power. Ayon. Yun lang. Their leaders and priests are corrupt. 
Parang ganyan din. <laughs> Micah specially condemns them for exploiting the poor by taking land God intended as an inheritance. Naku, naalala niyo yung panahon ng Kastila doon sa Pilipinas. Yung mga prile, di ba? Kinuha yung mga lands. Di ba? Naging land grabber sila. Kaya pansin niyo, madaming mistiso ang may-ari ng mga lupa ngayon. Alam niyo na kung bakit. <laughs> anyway, uh, nawala tuloy ako. <laughs> Sabi dito, uh, Micah's theme is God will not indefinitely no, tolerate the sin of His people. Long, wrong spelling pa. Naging toel rate. Tolerate po yan. No, God will not tolerate the sin of His people. No, Change is required. Kumbaga. Baka change is coming. No? <laughs> Parang political. Ano. Pero anyway, si Micah, in the midst of predictions of destruction, Micah gives hope. Yun ang maganda sa propeta na to. He encourages the people to turn back to true worship and obedience. In Micah's declaration of what the God of Israel and Judah expects of His people, we find the best Old Testament definition of true religion na may kita sa Micah 6.8. <coughs> Excuse me. It's all about justice. It's all about mercy. It's all about hope. Basahin natin, ano ba daw ang true religion? True religion, sabi ni Micah. No, mankind, he has told each of you what is good and what it is the Lord requires of you. To act justly, to love faithfulness, and to walk humbly with your God. Right? It's all about justice, consideration for others, and reverence to God. Right? Alam nyo, hindi ito yung true religion na tinutukoy na kung ikaw ay mahilig sa mga branded at mamahalin, paggamal-mal ng jeans na to, <laughs> dito yung true religion. Ang sinasabi ni Micah dito ay uh, kumbaga similar doon sa sinabi doon sa, sa, uh, sa, sa book of James. Eh, no? Kumbaga it's about justice, consideration of others, it's all about reverence, no? and uh, These are the things, no, kumbaga, that makes up that make up true religion, no? Justice, consideration for others and reverence. Na hindi to yung true religion na na na, ano, na pantalon. Ang sabi ni Micah, ang totoong religion ay not about doctrines. It's not about creeds, it's not about rituals. No? Kumbaga, ang dami ngayon nagdidibate, krisyano, kapokrisyano. Kaya mali kasi yung doktrina nyo kaysa sa doktrina namin. Ah, dapat ganitong araw sumamba, dapat, da- dapat ganito sa mga creeds nyo, yung Nicene creeds o whatever. Mali yung ritual nyo, dapat ganito, dapat nagbaptize ko. Ako, daming pinagtatalunan ng mga tao. Sabi ng Panginoon, hindi yan ang true religion. Ang true religion is about justice, consideration for others. In the reverence. Alam niyo, true faith in God is revealed in justice, love for others, and obedience. The Lord expects our religion to be lived, not to be lived out in our daily lives. At work, at school, no? Sa bahay natin. Tanong ko sa inyo, does your, your religion affect all these areas of your life? Naalala ko lang, sinabi ni Jesus sa Matthew 23, 23. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! You pay a tenth of mint, deal, and cumin, and yet you have neglected the more important matters of the law. It's about justice, mercy, and faithfulness. This thing should have been done without neglecting the others. Yun ang true religion. Right? It's all about justice, mercy, and faithfulness. Amen. Matatagpuan natin ang uh, tawag nito, ang uh, key verse no, sa book of Micah. Uh, Micah 6.8 Mankind, He has told each of you what is good and what it is. The Lord requires of you that, to act chastly, to love faithfully, faithfulness, and to walk humbly with your God. 
Amen. So, dyan po natatapos ang ating uh, fast cut about Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadaya, Jonah, and Micah. Nako, next attraction. Pag-usapan natin si Nahum, Book of Nahum, Habakkuk. Yan, Habakkuk, ibig sabihin matagal daw magluto. Habakkuk, <laughs> Zephaniah, Hagay, Zechariah, and Malachi. At pagkatapos natin yan, tapos na po tayo next Wednesday sa Old Testament. Nako, dapat mag-celebrate tayo. And the following, and the next next Wednesday, magsisimula na tayo sa New Testament. Manalangin po tayo. Alam niyo, binanggit sa, sa, sa lahat ng libro na pinag-usapan natin. Patungkol po sa pag-ibig ng Diyos, sa repentance, patungkol po sa pagtalikta sa ating kasalanan at pagtanggap sa Panginoong Iso Kristo. Ngayong gabi, naanyanyahan ko po kayo na tanggapin ang Diyos, ang ating Panginoon, Iso Kristo bilang Panginoon at kapagligtas. Tayo po'y manalangin. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. I ask for your forgiveness. I am a sinner. But I believe that you died upon the cross for me. That you shed your precious blood for the forgiveness of my sins. I accept you now as my Savior, my Lord, my God, my friend. Come into my heart and set me free from my sin. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. God bless you guys. We'll see you on... Uh, what? We'll see you... Uh, kailan pa namin kayo makikita? Sana makita namin kayo sa Friday no sa ating uh, Zoom live group. God bless you and uh, maraming maraming salamat po sa pag-anyaya sa amin sa mga bahay niyo ngayong gabi. Bye.